welcome to the July edition of the Future is Female virtual roundtable. And the topic we will be discussing is commemorating the Pan-African Women's Day. Let me just go on first in terms of housekeeping. Please mute yourself unless you're speaking and especially our four panelists, they're going to be the ones who will be speaking mostly. Mute yourself when we need you to unmute, we'll let you know and remember to mute yourself. Although we will try to meet people, um, you know, as they come because we know some these things happen where they you know people forget to mute themselves so thank you all and very very welcome this is being recorded and i believe it's probably going on facebook live on the leading women of africa facebook i hope that has been done if not that will be done because we expect people to join us from everywhere and everywhere <laughs> so first let me invite my dear sister Gwen Malangu. Um, to help us do the Nexus Street Protocol um, in terms of welcoming and just acknowledging everybody. So, Sister Gwen, if you could please unmute okay. yourself. Um, we need to do this more often, you know, because we keep on forgetting. <laughs> I know, Sister Gwen. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> okay, ma'am. Have all the delegates uh, in the room today. I know I've invited a few people who are here, uh, especially former members of parliament. But with us this afternoon, where I'm going to spend a little bit of time, I know I was asked to be brief, but uh, at times when you have to present a person of accolades that uh, you cannot squeeze in 15 minutes, it becomes very difficult, but I tried. With us uh, today, we have the former president of Malawi, Mama Joyce Banga. And I would like us at this point to give her a very, very warm welcome whilst I say a few words about her. Let's give her a very big clip. Welcome, ma'am. It is indeed an honor to present to you distinguished guests a woman of stature, presence, and intellect. Mrs. Joyce Banda was born on the 12th April 1950. The first woman to come by When there was big talk in Africa for female leaders, she made herself available and stood for presidency and became the first female president of Malawi. She obtained a BA degree from the Atlantic International University based in the USA. Before focusing on politics, she founded and directed various businesses and organizations, including a garment manufacturing business. No wonder her sense of dress is so immaculate. <laughs> she also had a bakery, National Association of Business Women, which she also headed and the Joyce Banda Foundation, an organization dedicated to rural, develop, rural development and improving the lives of women and children. As a president, she faced difficulties. Malawi was ranked as one of the world's poorest countries and her, he, she experienced a deepening political crisis mm -hmm. and that's called by severe economic setbacks, including chronic fuel shortages and rising food. She also pledged- Sis Goin, Sis Goin, sorry, we need you to put the volume up. We can't hear you, they're saying, yes. I sorry, ma'am. Yeah, we can hardly hear you well, if you could increase your volume a little bit. Thank you, ma'am. My volume is on maximum unless I, I increase. Is it? Okay. Maybe you're not near the microphone. Okay. We, we could hear you, but not yet. It was not yet. Okay. You can go on. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah. And then uh, I, was, I was just about to say she also pledged to overcome Malawi's laws that banned homosexual activities and eliminate government corruption. Those... Is it better now? 
A little bit. Those were her potential for change under her leadership. And those of us who were there watching, hoping one day to be president ourselves, we learned a lot. Okay. She, re she received a number of prizes. I'll just mention a few. She got a prize, an African prize for leadership for the sustainable end of hunger in 1997. In 2011, she was named by the Forbes magazine as the third most powerful woman in Africa and the 40th powerful woman in the world. I can't believe that woman is with us this afternoon. Aren't we really privileged and blessed and loved by our holy God? I think we are going to benefit a lot from her and the other delegates that are here. I'm very sorry about the, vo the, 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 the volume, and uh, I had thought that you'd hear everything that I had prepared on this special woman that I so much envy and that I so much learned a lot, both as deputy speaker and speaker of the National Assembly of South Africa. I have always been pushing for women parliaments in Africa. And to me, it's an honor today to be able to speak about Mayor Joyce Banda. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Sis Gwen, um, for, for that amazing introduction of our special guest. You know, I am just in awe myself, not just of her, but of you. Um, you know, I love you so much. And uh, thank you, as always, for what you're doing, you know, in terms of women, you know, in Africa. So what I'll do is, and the volume got better, Sis Gwen. It actually got better towards the end, so we were able to hear you better. Um, and if we missed that, so sorry, you know, to anyone that missed that. Um, let me now invite my dear sister Madeline Nkunu before we get our special guest to maybe say a few words, uh, just to, um, you know, just welcome her as well in addition to what you've done. Thank you very much. Madeline? Good afternoon and uh, welcome to uh, all delegates. I sincerely hope that um, you are enjoying. For those in South Africa, it's a very cold. And, um, and um, I think I, I will take this as a privilege and, um, and an honor to actually welcome everyone <laughs> in the room. I would like to welcome uh, all delegates from really across the continent, from Nigeria, from Ghana, from Kenya, from um, Tanzania, you name it, in the southern countries, everywhere, Zambia, um, Uganda, uh, Malawi. We are really honored to have you in the room. First of all, let me just mention um, now that the protocols uh, are out, I would like just to mention first about the Futures Female um, uh, events that we have every month. So every month we gather together as um, women from the continent to reflect, to exchange ideas, to exchange to exchange um, ideas on how we can improve the representation of women on the leadership position. And this is what we do um, every month. And this month, more specifically, we are commemorating that over 60 years ago, we have started a journey of women empowerment. And I think we are going to reflect today as to how far are we and what are the strategies that we can bring, uh, uh, we can put in place so we can uh, improve the representation of women in, uh, uh, in the, the making position. Furthermore, even before uh, I go further, yes, I would like to welcome uh, Mrs. Banda if she's already in the room. I had a chat with her this afternoon and she she confirmed uh, that she was going to be here uh, to honor us. So it's really an honor to be in the same room as 
the first president of Malawi. It's really an honor to, to be standing here and honor the person, the woman, the role model that we can all look up to and say that he, she's making Africa proud and uh, the impact that she left behind. And uh, all I can say is that Aluta continue. So it's not done for, for you, Mrs. Banda. And we know that the world or Africa still need you. We still need your, your wisdom, your, um, your experience also to inspire the up and coming female politicians that would like to learn uh, from you. So it's really, really an honor. I wouldn't leave this platform without um, basically just mentioning a few words about a leading women of Africa. Many of the audience might be new and not knowing who we are. So Leading Women of Africa is a Pan-African social enterprise where we focus on leadership and um, economic empowerment of women. So some of the services that we do offer, well, it will come later during the announcement. So you can see how we are basically servicing um, Africa. One of the, uh, the areas that um, we, we focus on, on really a few areas. Thank you. So we focus on a few areas um, and one of the things that Okay, can we please be reminded to mute ourselves and our admin, please, um, Amanda and John, Please be quick to mute people as well. Thank you. Sorry, Madeline. Thank you. Right. So I was talking about our mission is that we focus on uh, the mission of LWA is to promote the interregional integration. We sincerely believe the Agenda 2063 that really want to see Africa or the, the, the Africa of tomorrow as a place where everybody has equal rights, where everybody is happy. And we as a company, as a woman-led company, we would like to play our role in really promoting the interregional integration. And that practical, uh, in a practical sense, what we're saying is that let trade from each other. So uh, the company focuses on trade and investment. You know, we want to make sure that Africa, we trade amongst each other so we can uh, increase the percentage of inter- uh, regional um, trade. So um, thank you so much again. It is really an honor to be hosting basically Africa on this platform. And um, as we continue, I'm sure we'll get to know about one another and we'll get to know more about what we can do for one another and how we can basically exchange um opportunities, knowledge, expertise, so that we can take the Africa that we want, we can make it a reality uh, in our days. So thank you so much. And Mama Kay, over to you. Thank you so much, Madam Madeline Mpunu, and well done to you and your team at Leading Women of Africa for the work you're doing. Um, for those jo just joining us, this is a collaboration event between leading women of Africa in association with Bold Nipples Africa and the Future is Female is a virtual roundtable that we do every month. And this topic for this July month is commemorating the Pan-African Women's Day. You've heard from our dear sister Gwen, I always call her sister Gwen, and she is an icon as well in politics and women issues in South Africa. If I was going to talk about her and read her bio, we'll be here all day. She was a minister of parliament. She was, she was, she, she's played so many roles and I'm sure we're going to learn a lot from her. And, you know, all standing on all other protocols, um, with our excellency, uh, President Joyce Banda, thank you for, you know, acknowledging this event and being part of what we're doing today. And yes, so now 
yes, keep telling us where you're joining us from. Uh, Madam Lirian, thank you from Nigeria. I hope we don't get outshined by the Nigerians in the room again uh, in this round table because we have people from Kenya, Uganda, and Botswana, Malawi, you know, as well. Thank you and welcome to everybody. So we don't want to waste much time because there's a lot, you know, we want to talk about. And we've got four amazing and inspirational um, panelists, you know, who are going to share some of their work and experience and as well help tackle some of the questions, you know, that we feel will help us all in terms of all the work we're doing in Africa, especially with women empowerment, you know, like uh, my dear sister Madeline said there, you know, we want to reflect, we want to connect, we want to collaborate. This is what this is all about. So let me just um, introduce the four first, amazing, not in any particular order. And then we're going, like I said, it's just more conversation, you know, more than anything. And they're just all powerful, powerful individuals who are doing so much in their countries and across Africa as a whole. So Professor Sunun Gura, um, she is the a gender expert and vice chancellor of women's university in Africa based in Zimbabwe. Dr. Onalena, social development and development policy expert in Botswana, Professor Abubaka, Professor of Counseling Psychology, Miriam Abacha, American University of Nigeria in Nigeria. And last but not the least, Honorable Professor Ruth. She is the editor in chief um, uh, for AJFAND and the founder of Rural Outreach Program Africa, which is in Kenya. So that's a quick run through there, huh? And we're going to probably start the conversation with my dear sister from Zimbabwe. Um, Professor Suningurai Dominika Chingaranda. I hope I haven't, you know, pronounced your name too wrongly. Um, so I, if you could unmute yourself, Professor. Professor Sunigara, I'm just trying to make sure she's in the room. I think I saw her earlier. If not, we'll start with um, Dr. I oh, you are. Okay. Thank you. Yes, in the room. yes. So be <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, my dear sister, all the way from the Zimbabwe? Very well, thank you. <laughs> okay, let me tell you a little bit about her, but we'll probably learn a little bit more from her as she talks. Uh, she's a professor of sociology who holds a PhD in sociology and a master of science in sociology and social anthropology and a BSc honors from the University of Zimbabwe. She is the Women's University in Africa, uh, in Africa Vice Chancellor since 2021. When she joined Women's University in Africa, she was coming from Zimbabwe, Ezekiel Guti University, where she was a Vice Chancellor of the institution as well. She has served in very many roles, was a lecturer, head of sociology department, and as well, she is Zimbabwe's representative on the African Vice Chancellor's Forum. Wow. She is an expert, like I said, a gender equality expert for the African group of negotiators, a tick tank of experts and practitioners that provide evidence-based technical support to African government for effective engagement in the international and national climate change policy formulation. She is a focal person from Zimbabwe for the Resilient African Network, REN, and as well a U.S. A, the USAID funded project working with over 100 universities in East, West and Southern Africa. Wow, she has won several awards for outstanding performance as an educationalist and as an administrator. Professor, you are very, very most, most welcome. Thank you for making the time on this Friday to join us. And uh, I, I just feel so privileged, you know, to see you here. So can you tell us um, first, before we go into, you know, what we're about, about your organization, you know, the University of um, Women's University in Africa, Zimbabwe, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do there? Yes, yes. Thank you. And uh, a warm welcome to everyone who is uh, on this platform um, today. 
Uh, I am with Women's University in Africa. Um, it's a university that started in 2002 in Zimbabwe. We specifically focus on uh, fostering gender equality and promoting equity in university education. So the background to the um, creation of the university is that um, there's been uh, a skewed uh, pattern in terms of enrollment of uh, female students. The skew was more in favor of males across all disciplines. So our university has a policy to enroll 85% women. So there's an enrollment policy targeting 85% women and 15% men. We also target 15% men because we appreciate uh, for us to be able to promote gender equality, we also need to have a progressive men who will stand to champion the gender equality agenda. That's why we also have a, a quota for men in our enrollment policy. Um, we have so far graduated over 13,000 uh, students since uh, the inception of the university and 83% of those are women. So we are proud to have uh, uh, managed to have produced those students. We have put in place several mechanisms to ensure that um, women are able to enroll and complete their studies. We have a compulsory gender module within the university. We are saying to ourselves, we need to conscientize all our students and also our staff members on gender equality issues, despite their backgrounds in terms of um, their study areas. So we have that compulsory gender module in the university. We have also created uh, an early childhood development center in the university that is targeting women with children so that they are able to um, have their children enrolled at the same time while they are studying. So we have realized the majority of women fail to enroll for studies because um, of their gender roles one of which being to provide care and support to their children. So we have an ECD center in the university uh, targeted at that. Um, we have also created uh, a gender and diversity center in the university. Mm -hmm. We are saying to ourselves, for us to be able to make impact on gender equality issues, we should not only target our university or those that have got interface with the university in one way or the other. We also need to extend our services to the ordinary woman who might not be able to enroll in a university because of one reason or the other. So our gender and diversity center is more our, of our arm um, in terms of uh, um, service in relation to gender equality and women empowerment to the community. So we provide capacity strengthening of organizations, uh, of corporates, um, of the private sector in the area of gender equality and women empowerment. We also reach out to the woman in the streets um, to provide them the necessary support that they require in relation to um, uh, gender equality and also in relation to specific services that they might require. So, for example, as a university, we are saying to ourselves, we also need to build the capacity of the woman on the street, maybe in the area of baking, in the area of cooking, in the area of beauty, because those are some of the areas that women um, want to associate themselves with. So we also um, come in to from that particular angle. So we have a, a we taken a twin track approach to gender equality, where we are saying we have a focus on women empowerment, but we also feel we also need to rope in the male counterpart in our uh, initiatives around promoting gender equality and women empowerment. We have embraced a multi-stakeholder approach. We engage with various stakeholders, including the private sector, because we have realized we cannot go it alone. We need to uh, engage with uh, stakeholders. Uh, that's how we can actually make significant impact on the ground. So I would say in a nutshell, that's who Women's University in Africa is. 
we have uh, three main faculties in the university. We have a faculty of social and gender transformative sciences, the faculty of agricultural, environmental, and health sciences, and the faculty of management and entrepreneurial sciences. Um, and this standalone research, innovation, and postgraduate center, as well as a gender and diversity center. We are in Zimbabwe, Malawi, and uh, Zambia at the moment, and we are hoping to extend to other parts of Africa. Thank you very much. Wow, Pro, what a very, very unique initiative. I know I already see some hands up already wanting to ask questions, but please, um, you can ask the questions in the chat room and we will open the forum for questions. Thank you, you know, for what you're doing with the university, Women's University in Africa. I am, I, I just feel so honored when I hear women like you and your colleagues, you know, in terms of, you know, what you're doing, 13K students already graduated, 83% of the women. And, you know, like you said, involving the men because we cannot do this alone. So I will come back to you. Let me introduce our next uh, panelist. So I'll come back. This is all about. So let me introduce our next distinguished um, panelist, Dr. Onalena. Selowane. She is uh, a social development and development policy expert who is based in Botswana. She holds a PhD and an MPhil and a BA from the Universities of East Anglia, Success and Botswana and Swaziland, respectively. She is a social development and development policy, policy expert, like I said, and she has Spent more than 30 years at the University of Botswana and has served in national and international institutions as well in various think tanks. She served in the two United Nations boards, the Committee for Development Policy, New York for six years, and the United Nations Research Institute for Social Development for six years. As a social development expert, she facilitated in the production of Botswana's National Sustainable Development Framework and the Africa Agenda 2063, where she developed a keen interest in the problems of affording housing. She has researched and published widely on poverty, agriculture, social development, gender, gender equality, affordable housing, and human rights in Botswana and the African region. She is a founder member of Iman Basadi Women's Association and led the organization as vice president and president in the 19, 1990s and early 2000s, while driving the organization's agenda for women's political and voters' mobilization and awareness raising. She is an executive committee member in the Council for Development of Social Science Research in Africa. You are welcome, Doctor. I know you joined way, way, way earlier. It was good to see you. If you could unmute yourself, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Mama Kay. Always uh, <laughs> happy to see you. And I know, right? I'm so happy to see you. I can't wait to come and visit you. I feel I feel so humbled with such an illustrious uh, group of women. Um, in, in fact, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm totally I'm in awe, you know, of all these women in as delegates and as well as speakers. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. You know, obviously there you have a lot of experience in terms of social development and development policy. So just give us a little bit, even personal background, whatever you want to share. Why did you start to, you know, become a social development? Why social development? Why gender equality? Thank you. Well, I, I majored in uh, sociology and history as, as an undergraduate. And then I was intrigued by uh, the contribution of economic thought on, 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 on the development of specifically my country, but also the SADC region, and then the Africa region and the third world in general. Uh, and so I, I've always been very, very greedy in terms of wanting to know things that, that seem exciting, that seem to have potential to make an impact on the lives of the people that I love most. Um, 
um, people in my country, in my region, in my neighbors, South Africa, in Zimbabwe, Malawi, you know, our people have moved around these countries long before the borders were set up. Uh, and so every time I get engaged, uh, I was invited to these uh, UN committees, to serve in these UN committees. And it, it continuously opens up new doors and new areas of interest that have potential uh, when harnessed properly to change the lives of, um, uh, of African people. So I, I have uh, served uh, the, 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 the African continent in terms of various think tanks that developed the, um, the Africa Agenda 2063. And, uh, but uh, by the late 1990s, I was physically and mentally exhausted, juggling, um, uh, um, juggling civil society work uh, promoting women's representation in parliament, in cabinet, and also trying to push uh, uh, women's better representation, better opportunities in the in the corporate world. So by the 1990s, as a young mother, uh, I was absolutely exhausted because I I do tend to put to put myself 100 percent in the things that I do. Uh, and so until my doctor said, now you make a choice, you die for your causes or you live for your baby. And, and hmm. the choice was, was very simple. I, I had begun to be very, very sick. Uh, although a teetotaler, uh, I, I had these, uh, these uh, shakes like an old, old woman or somebody who was, who was an alcoholic uh, hmm. And so I had to take a break, uh, and I must admit it was a, a long, long break. I founded uh, Emma Ambassadi. Emma Ambassadi means um, uh, stand up women. I was one of the co founders. We were young in our 20s, and we thought we could move the world. <laughs> we believed so much in the African dream of uniting the continent and ensuring that every African citizen would feel. Uh, the benefits of having had their young get educated in the best universities around the world and then come back and make a change. And then to come back and find that it, it was not easy. It's a long, long struggle. So, um, yeah, uh, the struggle for women's emancipation means you are on the go all the time. You slacken, you lose ground. So, so we have to find ways of ensuring that when we slacken, uh, we are able to push some other younger person in the front uh, and, and, and keep backing them and supporting them full force so that there is no time really for a break. You break, you are broken. Hmm. So, so that, that, that's, that's where I have been. And... Now that my health is more or less, uh, uh, I can't go back to when I was in my 20s, obviously. This is my birth month. I've just celebrated 60 years of existence as a human being. Oh, <laughs> Happy birthday, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I just need to go back in there and, 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 and um, uh, the comrades from Zimbabwe, I might be coming there to observe your elections next month. Hope for a welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure you'll be welcome. This is what all this is all about. Thank you very much, Dr. Nale Laina. And uh while we do that, let me introduce our fourth um, panelist um, as well. So hoping that you'll be able to join us at some point. So our fourth panelist is the Honorable Professor Ruth Oniango. She is Editor-in-Chief of AJFAND and the founder of Rural Outreach Program, ROP Africa, and she is based in Kenya. Dr. Ruth, please unmute yourself, and I will share as well a little bit about um, Professor 
Ruth, you know, here, sorry, I'm confusing all the, 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 the title. Uh, forgive me, ma'am, uh, you know, for that. So Professor Ruth um, Onyango is a professor, researcher, African Food Prize Laureate 2017, IUFOST Fellow, IAFOST Past President, IFT Award, to name a few. And she has been honored by our own government for our work to eradicate poverty and hunger in Kenya by working with small older farmers, mostly women, for the past three decades. And she's helped to formulate food and nutrition security policies. She received Kenya Civil Star and Distinguished Service Medal. She founded the Rural Outreach Africa, ROA, in the early 1990s and continues to be a clear and profound voice in research for development as an international consultant and speaker. She has served in the Parliament of Kenya and as Shadow Minister for Education, Science and Technology, and as the founder and ed editor-in-chief of the African Journal of Food, Agriculture, Nutrition and Development. She seeks to improve policy and decision-making through the dissemination of significant scientific findings and emerging technologies in the field. She, you, I could read on and on. I've got three pages about this amazing professor as well, who is doing so much, you know, in the community. She serves on a number of boards as well as advisor on African issues related to hunger, nutrition and poverty. She sees the woman and especially the African woman is the cornerstone of family and community survival and progress. She saw this in her mother and sees this in the thousands of women she has worked with in Kenya and across Africa. She just completed 13 years chairing the board of Sasakawa African Association, which is a Japanese NGO started way back in 1986 to address hunger and malnutrition in Africa. Currently, she advises on issues of food and nutrition from a rights perspective for vulnerable groups like resource poor children, children and those living in poverty and with disability. She is passionate about research for development, innovation, new technologies, mentoring and giving a voice to African scholars in the field of food system to share their expertise on how to solve Africa's food insecurity. She enjoys getting involved in trying to provide answers to many food system related challenges and also believes in being challenged by the young generation. Professor Ruth Onyango, you're most <laughs> welcome and thank you. It's a privilege to have you. And thank so you. Much. I, I just <laughs> adequate, you know, surrounded by all this amazing, you know, um, 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 distinguished uh, panelists who are joining us, um, you know, from various parts of Africa. How is the weather in Kenya today, <laughs> ma'am? It's, it's a little cold. It's in Nairobi. Yeah. Um, Madam K, how are you? How are you? Awesome. Thank, thank you for inviting me and just welcome everyone. And, you know, normally I don't like my, my small bio being read out. You know, I've been around for a long time, so my CV is just a book, you know? Yeah, like for many women, you know, just books. I normally say just Google. You know, when you Google, it's, it leaves me a bit more time to, to, to present myself and say who I am and why I do what I do. And sometimes people ask you, so when are you, when do you have time to be a mother and a wife and anything else, you know, isn't it? <laughs> I quite look. agree with you. I quite agree with you. I've been speaking yeah. to the other speakers, you know, obviously they've been sharing who, you know, their organizations and what they are. And you have been doing so much. And like you said, reading your bio, that brief bit, yes, it's probably a book, you know, which I can relate to. And like all the other previous speakers and our excellency who is in the room. So how can women, let me start now with this question now with you. How can women leaders improve impact more? in the African continent, you know, for you, you, you've impacted, you're doing so much, you know, already in terms of, for me, food security is a big issue, you know, in across Africa, and you're making all this, you know, changes and, 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 and um, contributing meaningfully and impact. So how can women leaders, especially those who are 
watching, listening in the room just now, how can we, you know, improve, make more, you know, impact on the continent, especially the young ones? Yeah, you know, as as we as we grow older, we, we learn a lot. We become more spiritual. And let me acknowledge uh, Her Excellency Joyce Banda. I met her before, and I miss her. Actually, I miss her. She inspired me a lot. Uh, so we can do a lot by just inspiring each other. Because you imagine all these CVs you are reading, the things we have done, and sometimes you feel like you haven't done anything. So what does it matter? All that you have done, whom has it impacted? Why is Africa still the way it is? Why is this world still the way it is? And at the end of the day, when you grow older and you enjoy good health, you tell yourself, look, you can only do what you can. Try to see what impact you can make. One step at a time. One household at a time. And if you are mentoring, one mentee at a time. Because we can't solve all these world problems, and there are many. But to also say, I think we have made a lot of uh, uh, strides. I personally feel when I look back where I came from uh, and, and where I am now and the, what the young people are doing right now, I attended the, yesterday an AGRA uh, uh, organized um, uh, webinar on, by young people and on young people and what the youth of Africa can do. So for me, it really is just an inspiration. We have to inspire each other. When, when, I, when I came up, I can name the women who inspired me to do what I do today. And there were not many. But I think we are a lot more now. You know, when I listen to um, our, our vice chancellor, Do Dominica, wow, I want to visit that university. <laughs> I want to visit that university. She has agricultural sciences, you know. So a, a legacy I'm going to leave behind personally. I'm always looking at Okay, everybody's doing everything and I can't be a man. By the way, when I come back, I would still like to come back as a woman because I believe woman is so special. We actually mm. determine what the world can be like. We feed the men and we are the reason why they are healthy or unhealthy and our families. We do everything. But my professional legacy was that journal. is African Journal of Food, Agriculture, Nutrition and Development. I woke up and I'm academic, I'm doing all this work, and I say, look, we don't have enough told about Africa that is positive. We don't have enough science told out there. We are people who have been educated in the best universities in the world, the academics, but they have to go beyond academics. We have to contribute towards building this continent. When I went hmm. to, to study in the US, whenever you asked me, so what are you going to do? I say, I'll go back to Africa, and I'll read Africa of all the malnutrition. Mm. But I'm okay. The malnutrition is still here and I'm about to leave this world, you know? <laughs> so I asked myself, so what have I done? What have I done? But I think all of us have just asked ourselves, what is it I can leave behind? How can I have someone else look up to Ruth? How can someone say, Ruth was here and this is what she taught me mm. to do? I'm, I'm, you know, following in her footsteps. When I was in that, okay, I think we have the network challenge, Prof. Much, um, much better. Okay. But, but you know, each time, you know, when I served on a first, my first board in Kenya, I was the only woman amongst sixteen men. You see. So you, each time you are a, a peseter, you are a, a pioneer, but a pioneer doing what? So, you know, we, we really have to invest in believing in ourselves and saying mm. that I'm going to do something. So my area appears to be food, and food is so basic. It's so basic. Mm. And, and I, I grew up knowing is the, in Africa is the women who produce the food, and they still do. But like you hmm. said, you know, we can't just do, I, I asked myself, no wonder we are hungry as a continent because we have left everything to the women, everything, including producing food. <laughs> so hmm. I said, no, we have to start getting men into, into this discussion. You know, We have to start discuss, bringing in our African men. We are leaving them behind. After all, traditionally, they are the ones who went, who went out 
to look for food as the women stayed at home with the children. And so really the discussion then begins to change. And these are some of the things then we can pass on to the young people that we mentor. I do a lot of mentoring of both women yeah. and men, you know, because if you want to have gender equity and if you want to have harmony, you have to actually uh, include all the genders in this discussion. Uh, and, and so I, I just feel like the journal for me when I got the award in 2017, the Africa Food Award in 2017, President Obasanjo handed it to me at that time in Cote d'Ivoire. He said three things. You know, he said, you know, we are giving Ruth this award for three things. One, her focus on women, making sure mm. women are empowered, women are supported, and women are able to nurture their families and also to feed the world, to feed their communities. And the second one was I was concentrating on African foods, you know, to value our own African food. You know, I love to visit Western Africa because that's where I really find our traditional <laughs> foods and, you know, you enjoy them. And, you know, we, we really need to get back to that. And we know these foods helped us during the pandemic. So yeah. I was concentrating on African foods. I still do African indigenous vegetables uh, specifically, mm. you know, which are very rich. And then finally, it was this journal that is now an international journal. And, you know, it helps young scholars to publish in it. I know many have been promoted in their universities because of it. And then many policies have been advised in many countries because of it. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, we do each and everything, and I should be retired by now. But I normally say, you can't retire when you are dealing with issues of food. You really cannot retire because food concerns us all, and food is it needs to be our business, and we look good because we eat well. And we can prevent disease by just eating well. So I'm just happy to join here. You know, you sent us questions. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we just we need education. We have to mm. educate our women. Women are not going to be up there doing anything, helping anything, if they are not educated, if they cannot go as high as they can, if they are not supported. And Madam K, I'll tell you, something happens to women once they get married. I'm sorry to say, once women get married, something mm. happens. The education goes out. They are no longer visible. They are not doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as I left parliament, I used to say, if I would have brought a legislation in the Kenyan parliament to make sure women retire later, because once we have mm -hmm. taken care of the babies and including our men who also become babies, we can actually now actually concentrate on building the nation. And we live longer. We are stronger. We make sure we stay healthy. And then we can actually be out there just making sure we also are partnering in making things happen. Because women do things differently and men do things differently. And that's how God meant, meant, meant us to be. Yeah. Thank you. I'll just leave it there for now so that uh, we give others a chance to speak. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Ruth, for that insight. And, you know... I Of Professor Arina. Okay, let, let me just tell you a little bit about Professor Arina. I think I did introduce him earlier. He's a professor of counseling psychology with Miriam Abacha, American University of Nigeria. And I can see some of um, his students or fellow lecturers, they're already in the room, you know, as well with us. Thank you for joining us, Professor Abubakar. And let, let me just find out from you as well. Um, for those who don't know, like we learned a little bit about what the Women's University in Africa in Zimbabwe is about. Can you tell us a little bit, but just very briefly, you know, very briefly, you know, about Miriam Abacha, American University of Nigeria, and in terms of maybe you're like um, what Professor said earlier on about, oh, you know, the courses that you offer for women, or are you do you focus on women, or I don't know. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit, sir? All right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Madam, uh, uh, and the moderator for taking a very good. Uh, handling the program very well. I want to, I'm so delighted to be part of this forum, even though I'm uh, uh, maybe the odd person in this forum, but I still believe 
whatever affects women affects men. And um, um, like uh, you just mentioned, Mary Abacha American University of Nigeria is an offshoot of Mary Abacha American University of Niger. Um, the Niger version of the university was established in 2013. And uh, that's about um, close to 10 years, 10 years now. Uh, the successes we recorded from Niger uh, uh, brought about establishing the Nigerian version because we realized 99% uh, of uh, enrollment of uh, people who seek for admission to Niger are Nigerians. And you can see the position of Nigeria in West African sub region is very, very great. That um, the universities we have in Nigeria uh, cannot accommodate uh, our students. So the founder of this university, Professor Adema Obakar Borzo, uh, thought that um, um, there is need for for his organization to come in to collaborate with the Nigerian government and West African government to see how to access uh, to to increase access to university education. So Mary Abacha was established in 2010, and from the time of the, the establishment to this moment, uh, we have been we've been been able to uh, to to produce uh, over uh, over fifteen uh, fifteen thousand. 700 graduates in from uh, about 30 uh, different programs in engineering, in uh, medical sciences, in, uh, in the area of law, in the area of uh, management sciences. So we have a lot of them, um, and we have been very, very outstanding in the area of medical sciences because most of our, our graduates are in Canada, right away as I'm talking. To. So we are the, the, there is a very unique. Uh, Passion about Maria Bachelor University. Um, uh, of all this number I've just mentioned, 85% of them, uh, close to 85% of them are female. So you'd be very surprised that uh, this university has keen interest in women development. So we give, like in the area of medical sciences, one very unique uh, uh, aspect we give and we give adequate access to female in terms of admission than, than the male. Uh, because, and that's why you see many men. Okay, so voice um, seems to be hanging, but hopefully we can get back. Network. Um, they said the reality of Zoom and virtual meetings, but hopefully we'll be back. But thank you to all those who are sharing, you know, um, in the chat room. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think we've lost him actually sure. now. So, oh, okay. I that's it. Prof Oh, take me this cup I made it, I don't know and I knew uh, you know okay, I mean, mean remember to meet people prof our professor Abubakar, are you back okay. hello yes I can hear you now okay. hello, can you hear me? Right, you're back. The network, yeah. the network has been very flopped. Uh, I, I, I reckon, no problem. Yeah. Okay, sir. So, so this is uh, how far we've gone. So, so, so our, our account of female interest in higher education, like I speak to you now, we have observed that there is a tremendous increase in um, enrollment into university. This is across universities in Nigeria and even some part of maybe Africa and like Niger. We have realized that uh, there are more females who, uh, who, who who have the quest to go to an and on that account. The founder of the university has, uh, has, has been given, has been given uh, license to establish more. So we have two more universities that have been established and we, we, we are also giving priorities to female in this area. We have one we call Franco British International University in Kaduna, which is even in the not, 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 not part of Nigeria. Then we still have another one we call Canadian University in Abuja. So this university, uh, are set to take off maybe by September, October, uh, as, as soon as um, very soon. So we also have as part of our ethic to give priorities to female. And apart from this, the founder also has also uh, made preparation kind of arrangement for female. That's why we give protection to, to female. We do not. We have zero zero ton tolerance to uh, uh, sex abuse and sex uh, the kind of uh, 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 intimidation. Especially from the from, from, from male counterparts. So here yeah, we don't take we don't we don't joke with that. And uh, we also give a very keen interest on the health of our, our female students. And that's why mm. we constantly visit their hostel to see how they 
the, 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 the leave, and uh, we monitor what, what transpires among the female and the male uh, students. So because of that, the trust, the parents of these uh, students are giving to us, we, 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 in fact, we have more than, uh, uh, each time we advertise uh, admission, we used to have more than we can take. So, uh, we, and, and that's why we, we establish it with increasing access so that uh, those who are able to get admission here can easily, uh, we can reach out to people in their uh, doorstep. So in Abuja and Kaguna, very soon we'll take off uh, our, our campuses there very soon. So this is uh, a concern we have. For, and, and on that, I, I, I call on uh, people from other parts of Africa to join Mura Abacha, American University, and uh, perhaps we can get the best kind of quality education they intend to get in any part of this world. All right. Thank yeah. you so much, Professor um, Aruna, there for that amazing presentation. I'm so glad, you know, like you said, but you're not the odd person here, please. Um, you're not. So now let me invite, um, Prof I just want to throw these questions to Professor Sunun Gurai. Um, you know, I know you spoke earlier on, um, Prof, about the fact that, and I was so impressed, you know, to hear that in terms of what the Women University in Africa, you know, is doing, and as you, as a, uh, you know, as a vice chancellor, you know, for there, um, the fact that you're offering early child development center, you know, targeting women with children and making sure, you know, such provisions, you know, are being made, you know, in, in the university, that, that is so commendable. So can I ask you, um, what supports mechanism do you think that we need to put more in place to support upcoming women leaders? And for you as a leader, I don't know whether you had some form of support mechanism that helped you to get to where you are um so what do you think you know as some of the support mechanism that we need to do more you know um in terms of supporting some of our women leaders especially the young ones professor sunan gurai if you could unmute yourself ma'am please uh, thank you very much um for the conversation uh, so far, in relation to support to women leaders, I think um, what I have um, noticed over the years is that um, most of the work that is aimed at supporting young women leaders or women broadly seems to be um, program-based. So if you go to civil society organizations, for example, you realize the specific programs that are, are targeted at, 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 at women empowerment. And uh, in some cases, because they are donor funded, they are not necessarily responding to the real needs of, uh, of those women. So that's one of mm. the challenges that I've noticed over time, a program based and donor driven uh, type of hmm. interventions which are not necessarily uh, addressing the real needs of As those said, women. So, what to, will be your recommendation on how we can, as women leaders, uh, working with our male leaders, forge meaningful partnership um, in order to advance women's development agenda? Uh, am I on? Yeah. Um, yes, sir. Let, yes. let, let me. I would like to engage with that, but I, I want us I want to take us a step back so that um so that we appreciate the size of the problem we are dealing with. Even if we focus on one area of our many, many programs, we have demographic challenges. And one of the most uh, serious of the demography of African problems is that uh, the people, the population, the working population of Africa that has gone through tertiary education is minuscule. Mm. Those who have entered into tertiary education it is very rare on the African continent to find more than 
10% of the working population of Africa who have done some, have just entered into tertiary education. There are still many countries on this continent where the majority of the working population, majority as in something in the magnitude of 70%, have hmm. never set foot inside a school. Zero education, not even a year of education. So when we look at access to basic education, and we look at the a AU agenda, of which I participated, I must admit, as part of the think tanks. We have very, very lofty dreams about transforming yeah. Africa into an educated, skilled, uh, technologically savvy uh, continent. When in fact, we are looking at countries where uh, to have achieved 5% tertiary education, completion of up to now is still a challenge. Mm. You cannot have technical people who are technically innovative when they can't read or write, when they've never set foot inside mm. a school. It means that those of us with a university education are an elite group that reproduces itself, that ensures that our children get to get the best because education is key to a better future, to better opportunities. That is the African reality. Hmm. We are the only continent that is so segmented, that has so many countries, so that each of our countries is basically just a little hamlet, different governments with an ill-educated uh, uh, populace, and we have dreams of transforming ourselves. And mm -hmm. in many of our countries, even that access to education particularly tertiary and secondary, is predominantly a male privilege. In Southern Africa, we have a unique situation where the majority of those, except for a few countries, Southern African countries, but generally uh, because of the traditions of how our forefathers end their living, uh, by accident, it is the women who would have gone to at least to secondary school until they start uh, to be uh, productive in terms of making babies. We overwhelm, I mean, historically that has been the case. But when it comes to tertiary education, that advantage shrinks. So when we talk about solution, women must understand that if we are going to transform our, our continent, we have to focus the next 10 years on transforming not only the children who are coming behind, but the population that is already working, but ill-skilled and ill-educated. Education of the working population, not just of children, has to be hmm. top you priority. What, based on what um, uh, Dr. Onalilana said there, so if you can just give us a, a short contribution to what you feel as well, be it whether it's about forging meaningful partnership in whatever, what are the roles of AU, UN? So, ma'am? Yeah, thank you. I really support yeah. what uh, Dr. Nalema has just said, that uh, we need outcomes. We need accountability. We have all these huge conferences, including the one which is in Rome right now, just ended, and people sign on, but there's no one to hold them to account. And I think leading uh, women of African, actually, uh, you know, you know, tag on this and make sure we come up with something which we can use for holding accountability. And uh, when it comes to how do we make this run, you know, I, I don't really agree with many people who say we, we can't get, we have to demand funds from the international mm -hmm. community because they were all built on the backs of Africa. We have to demand mm -hmm. funds, those donors have money 
And I think as women, we can get more money than they give to governments to do this work we want to do. They are the ones who say African women will actually build Africa, but we need resources to do that. And then I just wanted to come back to what uh, uh, Vice Chancellor Dominica talked about, strategic, strategic uh, mentoring. I, I like the idea of strategic mentoring. It's not a one shoe fits all. Uh, you know, you, you mentor according to the needs of the country. Uh, and and, and, and uh, actually sometimes I feel like in some of our countries, we make uh, 10 strides forward and then we go back by 20, 20 strides. Um, okay, I think Prof. Prof. Oh, Ruth, um, what happened? Yeah, what happened? Okay, somebody. I think they were they were probably trying to mute the noisy makers. We were, we're going to send oh. them to behind the class now, so oh. they muted you. In error, oh, they I muted think, me. I <laughs> yeah, I was going to say yeah, uh, it's not an easy environment to work in in our individual countries. Remember, we are 54, 55 sovereign states, and almost every environment is different. The, uh, the, the you know the, the the legislations are different in Kenya. We are free education. We made a lot of strides, and lo and behold, we have a huge population of young people educated, degreed, with no jobs. Mm. That's a powder keg already, you know. Yeah. So every situation is actually different. But let us share. Let us come together. Let us learn from each other. Let us invite each other. You know, let us try to do what we can. Personally, I, I, I like adult education. And, and Dr. Onalema, I agree with you, Onalena. I agree with you there, you know. We, we, I teach, we teach uh, functional literacy. So when we work with women in agriculture, we, to make them understand technologies, we actually also educate them. We use their mobile phones to teach mm. them how to even just write their own name. And, and you should see them, you know, when they get empowered with the literacy. We need to really get women to be happy about themselves, what they can achieve and what they can do and to be confident. And I think holding each other's hands, we can really do a lot. And then the men will just follow us. They have no choice but to follow us. We need them anyway. Thank you. I just <laughs> wanted to add on to that. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Ruth, there. We need them. We need to demand accountability, adult education, using technology. I'm just going to give um, our uh, Honorable Professor Abubakar, um, admin, please keep muting people. Um, yeah, please, um, so that we don't get interruptions. Um, because, yes, we're going to go into the Q&A shortly now, and there's been a few in the chat room. So, uh, Prof Abubakar, is there any more addition? You know, what, what, what do you think, based on what your other fellow panelists have said? Please, just very briefly, sir. All right, thank you very much, uh, our moderator. You have been very fantastic in anchoring this program. I want to quickly add to the function of uh, AU and other uh, uh, what they should do to ensure that uh, women achieve greater, maybe Africa, uh, maybe the way we, we actually want. Um, African Union, we all know, like, and other regional unions, uh, are, they have very crucial roles to play in ensuring that women reach the height they intend to reach. The, to reach. Because if you allow the women who fuck to go uncoordinated, um, unassisted, uh, eventually the society will pay for it. Because, like he said, um, if you develop a woman, not educating a developing a woman, developing a nation. So if you allow women to decay, the whole society decay. And this is exactly what we are facing in this uh, part of the world. We have left the function of women to women. So as you mm. OK, I think we're having technical um, network. Prof, are you still there? Women, uh, without a major problem. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Thank you. It was breaking, but you're back. Yeah. You're back. So, you're back. Okay. so uh, I think uh, African Union and uh, other sub regional organizations 
uh, can also come in to see how to help Africa, of course, women to achieve this agenda um, of ensuring uh, that women get this. This can be done through maybe coming up with strategic, strategic framework uh, for socioeconomic transformation of the continent. And, uh, and this, of course, can be achieved through several other means. For instance, we have, uh, the, if you look at Africa in time, we have been ravaged by um, war and the crisis of insecurity, of course, it's even uh, creating this kind of gap we, we look, we, we see. Uh, our women, of course, are victims of, um, of, of, of crisis. Uh, take Nigeria, for mm. instance. The Boko Haram crisis, of course, have left behind a lot of uh, uh, problems. And most casualties uh, are, are women. So you can see, uh, so uh, once there is crisis between men and men, women take the, 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 the repercussion. In fact, they feel the pain of it. Because uh, one, they can feel it in several ways. Maybe they're losing their loved ones, uh, allowing them to struggle for themselves, and uh, even taking them as, 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 as captives. And of course, this will, be, will have the case of uh, the, the Chipok girls who are up to now being debated as to whether they exist or not existing. So um, the, the African Union should intensify, not even just coming to proclaim. You know, the, there is politics in this issue of, uh, of, of peacekeeping. There is a very serious international politics there. So there is need to need to read to, to redefine our intentions as to whether we come in to help our helping our, our sovereign states to overcome security issues. We have the case of Libya, of course, escalating to a stop. You can see the problem that I'm bringing up ISIS, Boko Haram spreading here and there. We also have this issue of ensuring that there is stable democracy. Look at what has just happened in Libya. Just two days ago, there is, of course, can also female, of course, will be part of this. In fact, the great uh, number, number, number of female or women will, will, will be the, 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 the people who suffer from this issue of uh, instability in the democratic process. So there is therefore the need for African Union, especially at South Africa, to, to redefine the intention and look into the frame of coming up with a very solid, peaceful uh, uh, way of ensuring peace. Because if there is peace, women can excel to their maximum, maximum height. Then what was off the issue of um, uh, what pro promote the regional integration? There has to be a kind of integration where, uh, 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 where AU and regional bodies uh, should foster regional economic integration. Economic integration here will give uh, the opportunity for cooperation in terms of trade. Women should be seen because women are very good, uh, 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 very good at businesses as, as it is now with this issue of um, uh, IT. Women now can trade from right from their homes. You know, in our in, in, in our African culture, women are to be preserved because they are delicate uh, population. Because if you allow them to expose mm -hmm. themselves to hazard, with the external way of fending for themselves, they. Um, write it in the chat room. Uh, we don't want to overrun too much. So I just want to make sure, you know, we, we, and be specific about if it's to everybody, fine, or if you, you're addressing the question to any of our five panelists. Madam Alice Madaki, okay. you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mama, thank you so very much. This uh, very, very great and wonderful session full of uh, academic. Acad Academicians, yes. Uh, Professor this, Dr. this, yes. We are very, very grateful to have this uh, wonderful uh, insight from you all, uh, which will definitely take back home. Mine is a general uh, um, question. As a female entrepreneur, and uh, the topic of today's discussion is the, the female uh, in the future, we would want to also be like the Alipo Ngote of Nigeria, the Bill Gates, the monks of the world. Uh, in our little world as entrepreneurs, we are having challenges as women in accessing funds. Um, we work hard, we go to the banks, the conditions are too stringent. Um, most of us are not eligible. The con you know conditions are just tough. Uh, the working environment is equally very very tough. Uh, I'm just asking, please, is there an organization or a group 
or um, um, I don't know, um, an established uh, maybe microfinance, either in Africa or in Nigeria, that uh, will give consideration to female entrepreneurs in order to access funds for their businesses for growth and expansion, please. Okay, thank you very much, Madam Alice. Um, thank you for that. So the question is accessing funds for female entrepreneurs, be it in Nigeria, be it South Africa, Kenya, because I know based in South Africa, we have the same challenge. Um, any of our four amazing panelists wants to please respond to that briefly. Um, and I'm sure if anybody else has any more reply, because somebody might know a reply, do share it in the chat room as well, because I know Funds is an issue. We've had um, um, so much, you know, you know, um, people talking about funds and less demand, less ask, but not being um, um, donor dependent as well. So, any of our panelists, please, that wants to take up that reply, sir and ma'am. Hey, well, I just let me just uh, come in a little bit here and say one or two things from the Maria Bacha point of view, as it relates to empowering women um, from our own end. Uh, uh, like uh, from, from the academia, like and like we've been advocating, there is therefore uh, a founder of ensuring that uh, graduates from the university, uh, Maria Bacha, either uh, from Niger or in Nigeria uh, are, are given a kind of opportunity to get um, some kind of startup uh, grant. And this, he do this through, uh, this is done through um, giving them a kind of training. You know, so we engage them in a lot of uh, workshop and uh, um, building their capacities so that they can now live on their own. And as I talk to you now, we have a lot of programs we run university alongside they are normal study or program. So such program um, as the outside your study. So that programs are meant to empower them. So as they get uh, graduate from this, we have a two, two, two weeks, three weeks program, you empower them on the ICT program, that it will build a capacity and we also try to also uh, link them up with uh, some uh, notable uh, um, uh, financiers where they can get startup grants that will help them to continue business. So I think if other universities can employ some strategies, uh, I, I believe that students will definitely not, not, not depend entirely on the government for job. Like it is said by one of our panelists that uh, we have a lot of people out there looking for job and the, the spaces are very minimal. So universities, of course, can come up with a lot of programs to, to see how to, to assist. So our founder, of course, reach out to um, organizations, uh, make some kind of contact uh, from uh, donor agencies, and uh, we mount programs, and uh, these programs are meant to equip the students, and uh, within the period of training, uh, we, uh, we link them up with uh, agencies who come to get a start of grant. This is what we do in Maria Bacha. I think uh, other uh, donor agencies can also collaborate with us and see how we can uh, increase um, maybe uh, funding of uh, some kind of uh, initiative and uh, innovate innovations, which students, of course, uh, create time to time. Right. Uh, this right. is one. Thank you so much, Professor Aruna, for that. Yeah. And I think there's been a few suggestions in the chat as well. Um, wow. Professor Ru was talking about the Africa Development Bank, um, that they have a lot of programs. I'm actually mm -hmm. aware of some of them. And a lot of other people, in fact, one person said, um, Madam Alice, if you could contact them. Um, so if you go into the chat room, please, um, you know, there there's, seems to be a lot of ideas and suggestions, you know, in terms of accessing funds for female entrepreneurs, especially those who have issues or challenge, you know, with the banks and so on. Let me get um, Mr. Adam Ibrahim. Um, that's our final question. And then I'm just going to give our speakers just a minute, just to conclude, you know, give me a minute, no more than a minute. Um, so, yes, please put in the comments there. We're going to try and make sure, Madam Madeline and our admin uh, team, that we 
respond as best as we can to all the questions that have been asked there. Please feel free, our panelists, if you feel like sharing your 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 personal details or anything for anyone to contact you, feel free to, to send it privately to them or share with anyone in there. So, uh, Mr. Adam Ibrahim, um, you could unmute yourself. Of time, there's really so much, you know, out there that we really want to cover, but we're running out of time there. So, Adam Hello. Ibrahim, Hello. Thank you. are you Thank you very much. Yes. Are you hearing me? Uh, yes, thank you very you. much. You uh, uh, you. My name is uh, Ibrahim oh, Adam from Federal oh, University Muso, uh, okay. in Nigeria. Uh, of course, uh, what uh, Professor Haruna said uh, is very important because uh, most of the victims uh, of especially the Boko Haram in the northern part of Nigeria, uh, I am from Boro State and from Goza local government area, which is one of the local government that has been devastated by the uh, insecurity issue of Boko Haram insurgencies. And uh, women mostly are the victims because most of their uh, husbands and their male children were, uh, you know, killed, and that most of them uh, have become widows, and that at the end of the day, they are the ones that are taking care of their children and sources for the children's schooling and everything. Though there are some uh, non-governmental organizations that have uh, uh, really helped, and they have uh, really come into their rescue, but also government has also tried, of course, and but there is a need that especially those women that are in the rural areas that if there is a need for the african uh, women development is so to intervene in such a way that can provide uh, 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 something for them to indulge in uh, a small entrepreneur at home so that they can able to sustain their familyhood and other activities uh, uh, in their families and that is one of the major uh, suggestions that I made. Thank you very much for uh, uh, wonderful presentations. Thank you so much, Mr. Adamu Ibrahim, for that. And, you know, we keep, you know, praying and remembering all our women in the northeast of Nigeria here, you know, with the issue and the challenge, you know, that both yourself and Prof have raised, you know, for our women there. Uh, thank you for that. Um, one question in the chat room, and it's kind of a question and a suggestion, I would say, and I'll just, you know, just throw it out to Prof Aruna. Um, I don't want you to reply now because I don't want to put you on the spot, uh, but it is a valid question to comment. And um, then I will ask each speaker to just give me a minute um, you know, of whatever you want to say, just to end this part of the uh, discussion. So the question or comment is, can Miriam um, Abacha, American University of Nigeria, ensure tuition fee scholarships to women? I'm not going to put you on the spot um, to say you need to answer, Professor Abubakar Aruna, but maybe this is something if you're not doing already, Maybe it's something, you know, you could consider that could come out of uh, this conversation that we're having, you know, today. And um, so now let me start with uh, Prof. Uh, Sonungura, just to help, just one minute, just to, anything you want to say, I won't even be specific. Um, just a minute, ma'am, if you can unmute yourself. Thank you very much. I think um, we've had um, a very productive meeting. Uh, the conversations were very progressive. Um, my contribution relates to the lack of implementation of um, laws, the very progressive laws and policies within our continent. So um, I, it's, a, it's, quite, it's a, a cause for concern because uh, there is lots of commitment at policy level, but at implementation level, we see lots of gaps. So in Zimbabwe, we I have come up with a gender equality law that is uh, at parliament at the moment. We hope to see results of um, the enactment of that law. Uh, it criminalizes and penalizes uh, non-compliance to the gender equality provisions of our constitution and also the gender equality provisions of our progressive laws. So we are waiting to see the results of uh, 
the enactment of the gender equality law uh, maybe will drive lessons from there. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much uh, for, for that. Um, Dr. Onali Lena, ma'am, if you can meet yourself. Dr. K, you can just say Ona. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> okay, Dr. Ona. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hello? Yes. We can hear you, ma'am. Hello? Okay. Uh, the, the problem is that uh, those with money find it extremely difficult to deal with Africa. Uh, hmm. essentially because we are these little hamlets and the amount of money that we need are small little bits that portfolio managers of resources find it very difficult. How are you going to, you know, to distribute small, 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 small amounts? And hmm. so here's a challenge again to Lua. My son, when he returned from serving uh, DBS at uh, London, at their London headquarters, uh, had this wonderful idea, but um, couldn't, you know, he had to change tech. But leading women in Africa is in a position where if you act as a clearinghouse for the whole continent, you could in fact attract portfolio managers who are looking for investable uh, 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 avenues so that you 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 are the one who collects the money so that you can distribute it across small small uh, businesses in africa because they don't want the management that comes with dealing with small 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 producers they just find it absolutely a nightmare administratively so here's a challenge and an opportunity to leading women in Africa. Create a funnel so that you can then help the many, many small businesses in Africa by being the one that attracts the money. But if you just indulge us a little bit more, because I believe there's a lot we've all learned. Um, there's so much still to do. I know we have the B2B from now till seven, um, but we could, you know, go into a little bit of time now where I would allow uh, the LWA leading women of Africa president, uh, Madeline Makuna, to please and um, just offer summary of the discussion and a thank you to our panelists. Madeline, over to you. All right, thank you. Thank you um, for again um, uh, managing this process. It's so amazing to always have you uh, to manage the, 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 the meeting. And this was insightful one of the most insightful meetings i ever attended and i think the resolutions are already there or the outcome of the meeting is already there uh from dr ruth i think uh, just the highlight of you know women cannot go far if they're not educated i totally totally agree uh, with you on that because we really need to be equipped we know the work is so there's so much to do on this continent and we need we need to be a, a, equipped uh dr O, oh, thank you so so much uh once more i think the resolution that you came up with we definitely going to implement it um actually maybe after here um, uh, Mama K, if you don't mind, you can just give uh, Mrs. Gwen Matangu just a minute to share a little bit what we're planning in November. In November, we are planning um, a master classes for a master class for women in politics. And we can already start working toward the Pan-African Women's Manifesto that we can come out of that, uh, out with 
during that uh, that masterclass or the whole program that we do have in November. So thank you so, so much, Dr. O, for coming up with this um, uh, uh, this suggestion, which is no longer suggestion because everyone has agreed. We definitely need to start demanding, demanding every year as to what we expect from our leaders. So here we come, the Pan-African Women Manifesto, we will start working on that with the leadership. I think I want to put <laughs> really responsibility on Mrs. Gwen Matangun can be there to actually lead us on this um, because she will be leading as well on the on the um, masterclass that we're going to have in November for women in politics, which again, we're going to, we, we we're definitely going to want to invite the team here to participate so that by November we can present a manifesto to our African government. And I'm sure there's so many avenues that we can come up on how to present that manifesto. Dr. Sh uh, Shangarande, thank you so, so much. And I know Women University in Africa um, I've been there, they've inv invited me a couple of times um, uh, to present. This is a great university that I cannot stress more, that we need actually women's university to be represented in every African country. Imagine if uh, we can enroll in every country, 85% women, you know, can you imagine how Africa of tomorrow, the education, the women's education that we are all crying for, how fast we can actually achieve that. I'm sure let's pray for women's university in Africa to be represented in different countries in Africa so we can implement this because this is already a model in uh, Zimbabwe, in Malawi, in Zambia, where it's already represented. And I think we need you in every African country so that we can, um, we can implement. Uh, the same model. And I think we will fast track the women's education um, agenda as we are talking about. From Professor Aruna uh, of Mariam Abacha, American University in Nigeria, we thank you. We thank you for so many solutions that you came up with. And like um, uh, Prof. Ruth have said, you are actually just teaching us that truly the future is human. But you are also just telling us that we need to take charge of our own future and not let anyone to dictate to us how our future must look like. And we thank you for just really, uh, you know, conveying the message from um, Maria Mabacha American University of your zero tolerance on sexual abuse at um, university. That means a lot because we know, um, you know, what sexual abuse is doing to women, to young women, you know, and sometimes it's even small, you know, young women are being affected by this. And uh, I think by for an academic institution to lead us on this agenda of zero tolerance, it, it will take us far. So I thank you for your contribution and the solutions that you have uh, brought on board. I will be in touch, um, you know, I know you had some um, technical challenges or network challenges. I will be in touch so I could get even more from you on what you have shared now so we can compile. And I'm sure some of those ideas will be included in the Pan-African Women's um, Manifesto that uh, we will be working on toward December. So we really thank you, uh, uh, thank everybody uh, for your contribution. And I sincerely believe that um, everyone in this room tonight will go out worth something, something that will contribute in the process 
of development of our continent. And uh, before actually we end, like um, uh, like my partner said, Mama K, we have a bit to be. So don't go yet. There is a bit to be. I think in the room, everyone is a business person everyone is doing some kind of um commercial activity this will be just a time for us to share we're not gonna be too long we know that the time is against us we will be very very short and we will um we would like to share on how or i mean, I mean share the uh, opportunities but before that mama k if you can give just this queen a minute or so to share a little bit about our plan for, for November. Thank you so yes. much, everyone. Okay, thank you so much, uh, my dear sister Madeline there for the summary and thanking our amazing four panelists. And yes, I think this is the part we're just going to um, share, you know, the, a few announcements, but like uh, Madeline has said, let me announce this, Gwen. You know, this is about action. So it's, it's not just about us talking. But it's about, are we taking action? What are we doing? Like she said, let's hear it from the office. So it's going over to you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor, for the opportunity just to, to be brief and uh, speak about the exciting November meeting. Um, when an un uneducated person is being shown, whether on TV or anywhere else, that person would always be female. I look at uh, immediately after elections, when members are sworn into parliament or into local government here in South Africa, they will laugh at a woman who cannot say the words in English. And you ask yourself that if you had asked that woman to say it in their mother tongue, would they have had a problem? And definitely no. So the panelists that are make, making mention of the fact that the biggest enemy to women is education. It means we need to focus on education more than anything else. About three weeks ago or two weeks ago, our president, President Cyril Ramaphosa, was speaking on the national TV and he spoke about the under, under spending of local government. And when you take it further, it is not only underspending, it's where people don't even know the fiduciary responsibility they have, that hmm. they should make sure that whatever is allocated to them is spent in that financial year. Otherwise it affects their allocation of the next year. But in the absence of no knowledge, people will do that. Hmm. They will think that we are saving for the country when in actual fact, the country has voted for those funds to be spent in that financially. Now, this brings me to, because I have to summarize, why I am excited about November. What I did in South Africa as a former speaker, I took advantage of the fact that nobody will say, why am I calling all former members of parliament? I would be able to answer that question because in other countries, when you exit parliament, you become a resource. The local government uh, municipalities should not be struggling when we are here as a resource. But what do we do? We are drivers for our grandchildren, take them to credit, come back because nobody has found a role for us. And then that brings me to, I think it was Dr. Honor, or I don't know if I'm making a mistake, but there is one of the doctors who said we should work as a funnel. If we're all going to be speaking in small voices, South Africa here, Zimbabwe there, and so on, we may not actually reach our goal. But if we were going to say LWA, here is a pool of members of parliament who served in committees, who have a track record, who could be utilized anywhere in Africa. It doesn't mean that if I was an expert in South Africa, I must only be used in South Africa. There might be need for me in Nigeria. There might be need for me in Malawi. And I should be able to be flexible and be able to assist. So we are sitting with a resource. Even the kind of things that I'm talking about, 
us becoming observers at the IPU, we can actually take from those people who participated in, in the Interparliamentary Union long time before and just make sure that they, they go there and be our voice. And today you don't even have to travel. We can do everything online. So the excitement that we have is that uh, my, my, uh, my lo lovely sister Madeleine has thought of this project, I think for the past two years, we've been trying to say, how do we approach it and so on. But I did what I did in South Africa. I've got a database of all former members of parliament, which committees they worked in. So if municipalities need them, they can get them yesterday. That is how organized this group is. But we're trying to knock at doors that are not opening, and I don't know why. We are not trying to get any money from anybody. We are trying to say, here is a resource that we can share with <laughs> Um, I think the mutate is going. It was supposed to be somebody else. Admin, she's going to yeah. unmute yourself. So sorry, somebody yeah. muted you. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> okay. as I conclude, then we have this resource, and I'm definitely sure we have it in other countries of Africa. And if we can use this vehicle that we have, the LWA, to be the funnel that is used to assist countries, we can go a long way. It, it pains me when I l listen to a female speaker trying to make a point. And I'm just saying if she could have spent, not necessarily with me, but any other person that I could recommend, the speech would have made such a lot of sense, would have, you know, but they become laughing stock. And uh, at the end of the day, men think that we uh, we don't deserve the, 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 the posts that we have or the the allocated seats that we have. So we need to also make sure that those women become smart because we are smarter. We don't have to point fingers at them. As we point fingers, four fingers are pointing at us that what is it that we are doing to assist them. So November is coming. Don't be left behind. Make sure that you start speaking to honorable members in your country that there is something that is coming. Some of them might be part of us. No. really really appreciate it you know for all the comments you know just thanking our speakers they've been amazing please a round of applause for amazing speakers um and uh sis going as well for that input and of course the president of the leading women of africa i'm out madeline over i'm not out i'm here but i <laughs> The official bit for my bit is done. Thank you for indulging me and for, you know, allowing me to help moderate. So, Madeline, over to you with B2B. Uh, thank you, Mama K. Thank you, Mama K. Bold Moves Africa. Thank you so much. I think um, definitely collaboration. We are enjoying the collaboration between RWA and Bold Move Africa is such an honor to be working with you, Mama K. It um, has been a few years already. It's really, really an honor um, to work under your leadership, to work with you as a colleague, to work with you as a partner. It's always an honor. Right. So we're going to start the B2B. And here we go. I will start. I will just share what RWA is all about. Then um, I would say maybe just five people. You can prepare yourself. You want to be amongst the five people, please put your name on the chat that you would like to present and we'll give you a chance to do your own presentation one minute. So RWA will start. We are RWA group and uh, we want to be the first point of contact for any networking uh, business. You know, we, we gather the women in business and professional women for trade and investment, for consulting opportunities, research and survey. This is something that we'll be working with Dr. O on this um, in a new year, executive education. You need something to know about women of Africa, to collaborate with women of Africa, please let RWA be your first point of contact. The second thing for um, early bird registration for the RPG, it ends on 31st, where you could have saved 30, 25% 
on the normal fees. So you still have a bit of time. If you register and pay before Monday, you will get 25% discount. Nomination, um, nomination for award. We have wonderful award. The nomination closes as well on Monday. You still have time to nom nominate your man or female leader please do so submit the link is there amanda can you be putting the link on the links on the chat so that people can get the links as we go along uh what else so if you would like to sell or buy in uh, at the exhibition we will have a wonderful exhibition during the the event please do not miss send us your products uh, information and pictures because what we are trying to do we are trying to compile a brochure that we're gonna share with the world so please contact us if you plan to be exhibiting at the conference we wanted just to share some of uh services that we do which we know already next this is a wonderful program of uh, uh, project that we do have. You know, the normal uh, uh, diary. So we are producing one for 2024, which will be branded LWA. So, and what the diary is, is that we include motivational quotes from women leaders around uh, the world. So, and if you would like to be featured in the 2024 diary, the Future is Female uh, diary, please contact us. Amanda put the link on the on the on the chat. So this is amazing for you to provide a week long, um, you know, a week long. We yes, seven quotes, seven quotes, a week long um, program where you can inspire readers or the owners of diaries. Then the next one is that RWA will be represented in Europe and we want to produce what we call the Trade Beyond Borders booklet. So if you also want to be featured in the booklets that will be distributing, um, it will be distributed in Europe free of charge. So it's more exposure for your products, for your services um, around Europe. Please contact us. Amanda, can you share the link? Next, uh, yeah, ure, ure, ure. the masterclass for women in politics in November. Do not miss. This will be basically the launch of the mentorship program that um mrs gwen have just alluded to there is a pool of experts in politics you know the basically the resources is lying there we want to utilize it uh, so that we can increase the participation of women um in politics on the continent so please do not miss um that program send us um your details you can uh contact us for more details and uh, from now on until november yes yeah, sis gwen will be so busy we're gonna be planning uh that program then the b2b marketplace by the way by the next time by the next month when you join for the future is female our marketplace will be ready you will be able to upload products services and it will be free of charge so we look forward we are so excited for that membership you're not yet a member of lwa please sign up and if you sign today please put membership uh, membership link there you want to be a member if you sign up today and uh, you will get extra 15 percent discount on all the programs that we have, like your event, which is already 25% until Monday. And you can add another 15% if you sign up and pay. And um, yeah, so we say that we do have LWA Leadership Institute. If you need any solution for your staff development, please contact us and uh, we will be able to help you last but not least mama k has already announced the future is female of august will take place on 20 on the 18th 
of um, August. And this is in commemorations of Women's Day in South Africa. Do not miss. It will be basically the continuity of today's session because we will continue to explore as to now, 28 years um, of democracy in South Africa, have we made progress? How far are we? What are we doing? How can we contribute? So we were going to present as well these resolutions that we have today. But please join us. Bring experience from different African countries. Let's exchange experience and um uh, Mrs. Gwen will be there to share with us what um, South Africa has achieved after almost 30 years of democracy. And uh, um, so it will be amazing. Do not miss. Please join us. Thank you so, so much. Next, who wants to be the next to present? One minute. Your one minute starts now. Just jump in, you can present. Your one minute starts now. Anyone want to introduce their business? No one want to sell or buy? Maybe people are shy. Please, you, people they, are shy. People I'm okay. Maybe I'll give this to you. You can handle. You good with <laughs> and then the audience. <laughs> I'm done okay, about I'm done my announcement. Not everyone else now to sell. If you want to sell, there is a marketplace, a free marketplace. Yes. And we've actually had a few people promoting some of, I'm trying to just go back now, some of what they do, um, like, yes, Mr. Sadika Sharubutu from Kano, CEO, Arafat Agro Allied Limited. Um, let me see who else did we have. I had a doctor, she was uh, coming in and out. She had network problems. So anybody open up and talk. This is the opportunity. Uh, let's see who else is in the room now. Uh, Miss Eunice, hello. Okay, everybody. there you go. <laughs> we can hear you. Yeah, my name is Jabu. I'm from Devon, South Africa. My business is Sodugo Consultants. We are in this training space, training soft skills, training the accredited, accredited with services CETA, HTTP CETA, and ACRA CETA. Yeah. I'm not Thank sure. You Okay, thank you. Anybody else that wants to share what they do? This is the opportunity. Thank you, Hello, Deborah. good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. We can hear you, Maria. Go for it. All right. Hello, good day, everyone. And I would like to, first of all, stand, start by um, thanking the hostel today. Um, it, it's been an insightful and um, impacting session, honestly, to me. And um, it's an eye opener to me to meet um, a lot of people from other places. Most, most importantly, women from other African um, countries. And my business is um, Tiger Nut Powder. I'm the MD CEO of um, the Mina First Chance um, Global Ventures. We are into um, processing and production of um, Tiger Nut into powdered instant drink to um, encourage intake of um, organic and natural um, drinks and to provide the body with the necessary nutrition that is required. So when I heard one of the presenters talking about the food of Africa, I, I have um, more inspiration and more ignited to continue to Let's dance. Let's, let's play. Let's connect. Let's build. Yes. Let's write our manifesto. Let's write our manifesto. Let's empower. Let's empower. That's spoken word. That's spoken word for you. So.
Don't be shy about making spoken words. And thank you for all those laughing in the chat room. I hope you are not laughing at us, but laughing with us, eh? Christelle, I can see, but you're not joining. Pauline, you're saying all the way in Togo, but you're not wanting to talk, eh? Pauline, waiting now. Okay, it's all go. Anyway, it's been a wrap. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Take rest. You heard all the tips that have been given. Um, resting, looking after yourself, and connecting, collaborating, talking, drawing more women, involving our men. They're not the enemies. Let's see how you know we can continue to support each other. Leading women of Africa, Madeline Kuno. Thank you so much uh, to you and your team. Bold Moves Africa, thank you to John behind the scene. And Amanda, thank you. And everybody else, have a good night. Dr. Honor, um, Dr. Uh, who else now? Professor Sunubura, and Professor Aruna, everybody else that's been helping us. Thank you. And you might see me at your meeting, Mr. HP, Doc. <laughs> All right, that's all we've got time for. But we will be sharing the edited version of the program. In fact, um, John, take a picture of us. So, John, take a picture of us. As you see, somebody, Joyce is doing that here. Women, eh? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you are the 18th, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you, bye, John. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very, you very much. Thank Thank you. All right. Bye bye, my Bye bye. Bye.